Okay, so we are in January. We are well in the thick of what has been a pretty long, snowy, very charming, very cold uh, winter. A lot of us didn't get to go home for Christmas and see loved ones. Uh, we've potentially been alone in Tallinn, uh, kind of sticking it out in our apartment, staying warm, staying safe from COVID. But that does have impacts. It has impacts not only on physical health, but also mental health. So we're here to talk about mental health today with Andre from Hello. the Health Board of Estonia and from Mari from the Tallinn Mental Health Centre. So Hello. thank you very much both for coming in. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for inviting. Thanks. Yeah. No, of course, it's very important. So I feel like Estonians are professionals at looking after themselves in, the, in, in winter. You guys from birth, you're like, right, I've got my supplements. I'm going to the forest. I've got my, my trip to Tenerife booked over Christmas. What are your secrets? We are not uh, the experts you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can start so well. I think the like most basic secret is like public secret is activity, <laughs> physical activity. Yeah. I think this is the start of uh, start and end of all issues. Like so, if you like move too much, maybe you will get some, some kind of like illness from that. If you move too uh, like if you move less, then you get some kind of illness from that as well. And uh, you should just like try to move at least like 20 minutes a day if you can. Of course, today is, <laughs> the roads are very slippery, but you just, if you like live on a, on a floor, like on the fifth floor, you can just go down and up again. And you, it just brings you out of the thing which you were currently doing, like especially if you work like, like at the own office building mm -hmm. like me. So you just go out of the environment where you are in and go back and then you might see the cl things more clearly. Okay, so. It doesn't necessarily have to be outside, go for a walk no. in the forest. It's just get your just, get yourself just physically stand moving. up from a seat for a, for, for a moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can suggest that. Okay. I think it's it's applies for everybody on this world, not only yeah, Estonia. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. No, I do. T I do. Uh, I do agree with that. I went. I just started. I kind of pushed myself to go to the office. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you know a lot of offices aren't open yet, but I pushed myself to get up in the morning and get back to what was a reg relatively regular routine. You know, get up at a reasonable hour. Mm -hmm. I've been sleeping all kinds of crazy yeah. hours, not being able to tell dark from light. Uh, but get up at a reasonable hour, make a coffee, have breakfast, get in the, like, get in the car, yeah. go to an office, you know, physically see something different, yeah. move. You, you so can just you... set a, like a reminder to your calendar that yeah. repeats. You don't have to like go for a five kilometer walk. You can just go for like one, uh, uh, one meter walk. Yeah. <laughs> start, for, start from the small okay. things. Yeah. Okay. And let's, um, let's quickly talk about the service that you provide actually mm -hmm. at the Estonian Health Board. So how yeah. do you support people in, in, in all three languages? I think? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I service in uh, Estonian, Russian, English. I started my work uh, from uh, 2020. I <laughs> went uh, into Health Board uh, straight at the peak of the crisis in March right. 2020. I <laughs> did not expect <laughs> where, what, uh, what is demanded from me. I, I knew that I have to communicate with uh, for foreign people, but of course Estonian as well, uh, but especially like people yeah, who have uh, recently arrived to Estonia. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my like primary job function is to consult people who are looking for a physician. Family doctor, general practitioner are all the same in Estonia. Yeah, they are called like family doctors, but uh, the name might be a bit misleading. They are not only for families. They okay. serve as like from, from infant to elderly. And uh, yeah, so basically yeah, that's my focus because Estonia doesn't, uh, didn't have at the time like a um, functional employee who can just explain to, to people in English or in Russian where to turn because the national language is Estonian and you, you have to like understand the system. Uh, and uh, yeah, you, so if you do not know the language, it's very difficult for a foreign person to come here and understand wh just what is the first point where, where I should turn. Yeah, so. And that actually leads me to a question. So I have noticed this kind of family doctor is the does everything. It's like so, a central uh, Yeah, whereas I, f I feel like uh, in other countries I've lived, it's almost you have to decide what specialist you need to see versus mm -hmm. going into a central point and that central point helping you out. Yeah. Um, do family doctors also help with mental health type issues as well? Yeah. So you're, they're also your point for 
not just, hey, I need this appointment or this checkup or whatever, but actually like, hey, I'm feeling this way. Should mm -hmm. I approach my family doctor? Of course you should. Okay. But yeah, if you, but it, it, of course with family doctors, it, it very much depends on your relationship with the physician. Exactly. So either he or she is just only prescribing you medicine, which you need, like, or, or you can go to him or her and like speak out what do you think and what's on your mind. And so yeah, family doctors, yeah, like all healthcare employer, employees, currently are like very busy so they might not have just this yeah. uh, spare five minutes to just uh, chat with you which is of course unfortunate but I think if you like really want to get through to them they can find the time and uh, talk to you yeah family doctor yeah it's like the, the, the general like a cog in the machine but <laughs> of course there are a lot of other like supplementary uh, mm -hmm. services and like psychological counseling and just uh, general like emotional hotlines in Estonia we have okay. So you, if you, uh, you do not have a good relationship yet with your physician or don't want to go to them because maybe they, you think that she will just tell you to go to a psychologist, you don't want that like a stigma or something like that, maybe you are afraid. Mm -hmm. Then there are of course other like more anonymous uh, uh, okay. people and they are like, no, they can offer like a structured interview to you. They are not just like, you can of course talk to your friends about it, but friends usually do not give you like uh, like more structured like response. Yeah. Like if your issue is really like uh, that you should go further in the medical system or to a psychiatrist or something like that. But uh, yeah, these uh, hotlines, which I know of, they can like give you like a more, mm, more like uh, this angle to where to go. Yeah. Right. Okay. And one of those supplementary services, presumably, Mary, is, is the kind of work that you and your organization do at the Tallinn Mental Health Centre. So maybe talk to us a little around, mm -hmm. around that. Yes, Tallinn Mental Health Centre provides different mental health services for adults who, uh, who uh, has mental health problems who suffer under mental health problems. Okay. So that means they already have a diagnosis and they already have visited psychiatrist. Got it. Yes. And actually our psychiatrists also, they are very overwhelmed and, uh, yeah. and uh, the family doctors, they, you should go first to the family doctor and then maybe they can get you an appointment to the okay. psychiatrist. It can be the other way too, but... Um, but nowadays, they they more say that you first okay. first appointment should be with a family. Okay. Yeah, because uh, family doctors also have this uh, special designated like therapy funds. They are not big. Therapy funds. Yeah. This is I think different than going to the psych. Psychiatrist? Uh, yeah, they can refer to like these uh, non-medical professionals, yeah. like, like yeah, psychologists, psychologists uh, okay. yeah. and therapists. Physio therapists, yes, mm -hmm. per yeah, okay. stuff like that. Yeah. And what is the uh, the kind of therapist landscape in in Estonia? Is it because obviously there's you know there's mental illness, which is um, of, of which you have kind of medical professionals, uh, psychi psychiatrists mm -hmm. and services and things like that. There's also, you know, this, I'm, I know I'm temporarily down, like, mm -hmm. I, or I need someone to help me mm -hmm. to break out of a, a cycle of the way I'm thinking or give me the tools I need to uh, bring myself out of this period of down yeah. or even just you know, I don't feel that I have someone to talk to here and I would like to talk to someone and, 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 and be pulled out of that kind of self. Or maybe like something, yeah, no, unfortunate things happen in life. So exactly, yeah, maybe exactly. Maybe feeling down for, for something which happened to you or you're like close one. Uh, exactly. So w what is the landscape like for that in, in Tallinn? Or how does someone approach it through the family doctor again to get that information or they're online or, or you know, I can book an appointment with someone over Zoom or, or something like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, so no, well, like I, I previously mentioned, we have this uh, like a pamphlet, uh, Healthcare in Estonia, it's uh, 2021, we will update it, uh, Health Board will be, uh, will be updating it uh, this summer, but uh, the like, general, general uh, things in here will be the same. The medical system luckily hasn't changed so much in the recent years. So yeah, as I said, uh, we have these helplines. Okay. So there's like a victim support uh, hotline, emotional support hotline and uh, lifeline support hotline. These uh, two first ones have service in three languages, Estonian, okay. English, Russian as well. So I think uh, if you do not have a family doctor, you do not want to visit, as I mentioned previously, yeah. then you can start from these channels. And we also have this uh, 
Piazi. Piazi, yeah. Dot EE website where you can even uh, like send an email. So if you do, yeah. do not like to like talk to a person or cannot talk at the moment, you can write them and they can and respond. get help through email and also okay. uh, more information where you can turn. But when you ask about the different therapists and the therapy landscape, I think that there's um, uh, there are therapists who who uh, who are like paid or. You can, if you go to the doctor, and then doctor can say go there or there, mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay by yourself. Mm -hmm. But uh, then there's a whole lot of different therapists in Tallinn and in Estonia, where you can just find them from internet and and go and and pay yeah. for the. Yeah, the Estonian medical system is basically divided into like mm -hmm. a nationally funded healthcare, where there are long wait times and accessibility might not be, especially during this current crisis, the, the same as it was before. But yeah, there are like private clinics which also offer all the basically same services but out of pocket and I think yeah. it's uh, it might be uh, like a better solution for persons uh, who have this uh, private healthcare insurance contract so sure. uh, whom uh, no, they might have also the Estonian national health insurance but if they also pay like or their employer for example pay, pay separately for a private health insurance contract they can just uh, receive the same services faster. Yeah, on the, the kind of private resources part. Yeah. So I think I saw places like um, Confido mm -hmm. offers services. Well, it um, Confido, yeah. yeah. Um, there's a site, minudoc.ee, yes. yeah. which also you can actually book a, a kind of therapist appointment online and pay online yeah. and, and have that via Zoom, which actually mm -hmm. looked really good as well. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, so it does, yeah, it seems like there's these kind of private um, resources that also offer. Uh, yeah. English speakers, or even actually our native English speakers, mm -hmm. um, provide. But yeah, services. this of, of of course, if you like already mm -hmm. are, have received like a su suggestion, like a serious suggestion that mm -hmm. you might have something going on that is yeah. not okay. But if you like just feeling for like a few days or a few weeks yeah. a bit down, it might not be a cause for like a major concern. You can just call either the helplines or ask your friends what they do think, or so yeah. yeah. Like that, so you don't don't have to rush to a, like a psychiatrist <laughs> yes. straight away. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can of course, yeah. but uh, yeah. Or and I mean, or I start with a counselor or or some other exactly. kind of uh, therapy. Okay, and maybe have like few meetings and, or sessions, and then then they also can say that maybe you should go to. Let's talk a little about what probably is causing a lot of. Uh, people wanting to reach out during the winter seasons, which is actually um, so sad, seasonal affective disorder. Um, so this is actually, I kind of, I'd heard about it obviously before people talk about it and say, get a sad lamp, get, take some vitamin D, take some magnesium, like you'll be fine, etc. But it is actually kind of breaking it down a little bit. It is actually, you know, a, your serotonin or your happiness levels are actually, mm -hmm. you know, chemically depressed. You know, mm -hmm. they have been kind of taken away because of a mixture of factors, light, isolation, et cetera, but predominantly light. So, um, it, it almost falls in between the middle of, you know, I'm, 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 I'm stressed and I'm feeling alone and I'd like to talk to someone. And actually, you know, my body is physically, is, is physically bringing me down, mm -hmm. um, which could be for a longer period. I don't know. We're only in January, so I think this is going to keep, <laughs> yeah, we're, we've got a couple of, another couple of months ahead of us. Um, what can people do to help mitigate? I mean, we talked about lights and, and, and supplements and things, but what can people do to try to kind of mitigate or, or bring themselves out of um, having seasonal affective disorder? Mm -hmm. Good question, maybe. You can, <laughs> I can <help> start. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, maybe the main thing is to go back to the basics, like the structure, like the day structure, like mm -hmm. you said before, that, that uh, there have been nights where you <laughs> go to sleep uh, middle of the night and uh, things like that. It, this affects a lot. Okay. To, to have like regular sleeping and waking time rhythm that yeah. you go to sleep uh, approximately the same time okay. every day. That so keep your body on a normal day, yes. even if, if, even if the you don't need nature to. doesn't keep you on a, on a normal yes, clock in some that, ways. That's sleep enough and uh, wake up 
uh, at the same time or almost okay. the same time every day. That's that's one thing okay. to have. Because I think that's actually another symptom, which is almost sleeping too much. Yes. Like you can't actually wake yes. yourself up, so you sleep longer. But the feeling might be that I'm I'm very tired and right. sleepy, and I need yeah. more sleep. Exactly. But I, that's actually not true. Okay. So keep on a sleep schedule. Yes. Don't oversleep. Don't undersleep. Yes. Go to sleep yeah. at the same time. Humans same. are creatures of habit, so. Mm -hmm. You have to like maintain some kind of like, like a structure in your day. That just mm -hmm. if you, if you feel that you cannot, you just as I said, you can like put in your phone this calendar that you have to mm -hmm. go. Even the applications now offer that uh, get a, like a eight hours of sleep every day. Set, set your like alarms, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, like you said before, that uh, moving and uh, movement, okay. this is, this is uh, another important thing that uh, you don't sit all day on the computer or on the phone or, mm -hmm. or at home. Yeah, just Even try to move a little yes. and maybe if you cannot like, fall asleep, take a, a small walk before going to bed, mm -hmm. I think it would also yes, help. Yes, that's actually a good point because it's very easy to say that uh, go to sleep at the same time, but what if you don't get yeah. sleep? Right. <laughs> but moving is, uh, is one thing that could, could help to, uh, yeah. to fall asleep on, on the right time. Yeah. And of course, if you cannot fall asleep for like a half an hour, you shouldn't just lay in bed and wriggle and mm -hmm. move. You, you can move out of the bed, like mm -hmm. take a, maybe a book and read it and do something mm -hmm. else. You don't have to like force yourself because it just won't work. It's impossible to force yeah. yourself to, yeah. to fall asleep. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, one thing is to move, like, like go to stairs and, uh, and um, move from one room to an another room. But I also think that it's important to, uh, to uh, train or to move some, do something differently, move, so move somehow okay. differently than you uh, move every day. Mm -hmm. Like a few times a week you should um, get your Hi. Yeah, yeah. I've just enrolled for cross-country skiing lessons. I've never mm. done it before, but like I thought, actually, it's a different way to move. It's a different mm -hmm. way to get outside. Uh, new skill, obviously, yeah. to learn. So something to that's uh, that's nice when we have snow. <laughs> yes, you can yes. also uh, try cycling. <laughs> right, <laughs> especially today. I I ride to work almost every oh, yeah? day, uh, yeah, like five okay. kilometers there and back. So. And running. Yeah. These are free. But nowadays, I personally think it's very good that we have so many Zoom options for different uh, trainings like yoga classes or. True. Yes, or I think others too. And maybe some other activities as, as well, like I sing in a male choir in Estonia. So, mm -hmm. uh, people who are English can join us as well. It's not mm -hmm. an issue. So, there are lots lot of these uh, indoor activities Estonians do doing. Okay. All the time of the year, basically. So I think uh, in the groups, like Richard, I think can put like a, a perspective of where to turn and mm -hmm. where uh -huh. to go. And I think you can ask him, and he can maybe suggest some groups or like uh, Facebook groups who maybe somebody knows some like I don't know, maybe knitting or handicraft or doing. I've heard cooking. about uh, yeah. language cafes. Mm. That, yes, uh, they have. Just started again, I think. I heard about cooking like together for just uh, in Zoom. Uh, no, maybe in Zoom, but oh. I heard of physically like oh, people okay. going mm -hmm. together and mm -hmm. cook, especially like those who are new, newly mm -hmm. arrived to Estonia. They can like show show their culture and yeah. how, how they do things and yeah. So yeah. something like social as well, I think, uh, will help. Social aspects also. That's okay. what yeah. I was going to say. That you should still talk with people and uh, yeah and uh, talk with your friends, meet with your friends, not only talk. That, yeah, um, like a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. uh, you should mm -hmm. strive for it uh, in Estonia as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so sleep and bo body, uh, body clock, mm -hmm. important. Uh, movement, important. Movement. Social interaction, important. Mm -hmm. Food. Yeah, food. food. Yeah. Yes. That, one one liter eat, well, of eating, Red yes. Bull before going no. to sleep. <laughs> Okay. Waking up and then have sleeping pills before to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or before no. going to work. No. Um, there is also things like taking vitamin D supplements, uh, things like that, which everybody seems to do mostly. Yes, in um, Estonia we say that uh, you should take those uh, all the months where uh, there is this letter R, like from September till April. Oh, interesting. I hadn't yes. heard that before. Okay. September till April you should okay. take D vitamin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But uh, it can also, yeah, if you like, you feel like you might have this like seasonal affection disorder, yeah, you should co contact a 
a family doctor, for example, okay. they, can they can refer you to a blood test if necessary. If mm -hmm. They decide that mm -hmm. it might really be that you have like a deficiency yes. of okay. the D or something else. Some, yeah. And there's always this thing that even if you if you have depression, doesn't matter if it's seasonal or, or not, you might get um, uh, medicine, but uh, that's not enough. You still right. have to yeah. deal totally. with yourself. You totally. still have to sleep and eat and, uh, and talk with uh, friends and people and, and move. And those basic things are still very important. Okay, I agree. And, uh, and there's more. Like you have to feel, feel yourself as an important and um, important person <laughs> that yeah. you that you I don't know do work or or you have uh, meaning in your everyday life mm -hmm. that um, just sitting at home doing nothing mm -hmm. you know, might not yeah, lead to good uh, results yes. yeah. and even if you wake up on the same time even if you eat you take yeah. these supplements you you train yourself that also doesn't give you this uh, meaningfulness yeah mm -hmm. That, it's just, it's um, just like staying alive. <laughs> yes, we as human, we need to feel ourselves uh, important, or we have to have this meaning in life. Why do I do all those things? Why do I wake sure. up and? Uh, and uh, uh, Estonian uh, unemployment as a meaning of life, uh, Estonian unemployment insurance fund. I think they also can uh, send people uh, to a psychological counselling if, if necessary. Uh, or, and victim support as well can so, but of, of meaning of life, yes. So Estonian un unemployment insurance fund, I think, can help if if you feel like you are like left out of the Estonian community. You don't have any any like jobs you you you, you see before yourself that you can apply to. I think they can help as well with finding. Mm. You don't always have to just go working straight away. You can just maybe learn a new skill. If mm -hmm. you already have, like maybe, I don't know, IT is currently popular, maybe learn code. It will give you like some perspective yeah. to, or something to do at least if you just feel like left out. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like there's lots of options or lots of different ways that people can explore basically breaking themselves out of what may be, it may be a temporary, it may be a, a longer term kind of funk or depression or, or, or period of feeling alone or down during the season. Um, yeah. And most of these resources are available in, in other languages in English as well. Yeah, yeah. and uh, one thing uh, for people who are studying in Estonian universities, uh, high schools, there are at the biggest, no, at, basically at all Estonian uh, universities, there is a psychological counselor okay. at work. Okay. So they so also the students, should yeah. be like the first point to turn yeah. if, if something is out of order. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so we covered um, we covered the seasonal uh, piece. We covered the uh, medical protect practitioners and your family doctor. Yeah. Um, everything is covered or at least summarized in the healthcare in Estonia guide, which I must admit I didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. So that's super helpful. Presumably, this is available online. Yeah, as it's well. available online. I sent the links already. And Perfect. Uh, for uh, organizations, uh, not for like private persons, but for organizations uh, who like employ foreign people or uh, for like our partners who also deal with more, more the like political side or the financial side of uh, per, no, uh, bringing in here persons from abroad to work, uh, they can contact me at Health okay. Board and I can uh, mail them free of charge it in a physical form like Perfect. This as well. Mm -hmm. And presumably this is all part of the Settle in Estonia yes. kind of program as well. Yeah. Okay, great. And then from a medical perspective of getting access to medical services, we've talked about uh, the Talent Mental Health Center and everything you guys do. How do people get in touch with with yours primarily through their family doctors first? To get help from Tallinn Mental Health Center, uh, probably not through family okay. doctors first. You can just uh, call us and and come book a visit and okay. an appointment and come. And uh, from uh, we have a web page and a Facebook page. Tallinn Vaimse Tervise Keskus. <laughs> okay, we'll put that link yes. in, the, yeah. <laughs> in the podcast. At Hellboard, we, we also <laughs> yes. have a website in English and Russian mm -hmm. now, so mm -hmm. okay. if you are more interested in like general healthcare or finding a family doctor, for example, mm -hmm. maybe some, somebody who is watching us don't have it, so they, we have the information and my contacts as well, so they okay. can call or mail me. Perfect. Okay. But no one's alone in this. Uh, in this period. Yes. <laughs> they shouldn't be. No. <laughs> well, thank you very, very much for everything and for coming in and sharing with us today. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you.